we're going to make the viral stick figure animator vs animation hit series dive into the 3D world with Blender. So it's been a hot minute, and one of the reasons for that is over the past few months, I've been working with the one and only Alan to implement some 3D scenes into his popular series Animator vs Animation. To this point, almost everything Alan has been doing has been 2D using Adobe Animate and Photoshop mainly. But this time around, he's using Blender for some of these scenes. And actually, to explain how I got involved in this project, let's toss it over to Alan. Hey guys, it's Alan Becker. I really wanted to start the episode series with a bang. And I figured the best way to do that would be city chase scene with flying mercenaries. We had never really done anything this 3D before. I got Guzu, an animator, to do a, an animatic using 3D. And he used grease pencil to do the, the stick figure and animated the mercenaries flying as just like spheres. But it was enough to really get the feel for the, the movement and the camera work. But after that, the, the rest of it was just sitting there untextured and uh, no lighting. This was actually a really solid start for the project and made my workflows way easier having this already out of the way. So the first steps for such a massive project like this was coming up with some good reference to kind of decide on the color tones, shadows, and amount of detail that we wanted to incorporate into the city. So for this, we turned to Alan's incredibly talented background team. They did some great paint overs for our reference. For me, once I had this reference, I was able to start getting the lighting set up in Blender as well as some of the 3D rendering elements. And then what really helped to give some scale to the city layout was using some volumetric and volumetric lighting in Blender, just adding it all to a cube with a basic noise texture. I was doing all this in EV as we didn't need the realism of cycles as we were going for more of that painted sort of 3D look. This gave us some really cool atmospheric depth to the scene, making the city seem large in scale, which in return made it seem like our characters were actually traveling more distance as they'd move around in these different sequences. I needed some textures painted to start modeling some of these vehicles, building fronts, and city elements in the same sort of style that we know and love from Alan's videos. So his background team started drawing up some different textures and building fronts for some of the shops and stuff that the camera will whip by throughout the city to make it seem more active. From there, once I had some of these painted textures to work with, I went about a really simple modeling workflow in Blender. We start with something like a simple cube for these building fronts, unwrap it with some cube projection, and then once the texture is loaded in, under the properties tab, you can choose correct face attributes and live unwrap. And this allows you to sort of model then and have the UVs of that unwrap update instantly for the different extrusions and details that you add to this mesh. This is something that Ian Hubert uses a lot in his sort of speed workflows for modeling buildings. And these little deformations to the mesh gave it some more contact shadows and fall off to make it seem a lot more detailed and less flat like you would get with a basic texture. So after about seven or eight different variations of these building fronts, I started distributing them across our sequence, piling the detail in anywhere it was visible to the camera, just distributed them all the way down the alleyways anywhere the camera went throughout the city. We had some more basic tileable textures painted for the larger skyscrapers and stuff in the city. But this was sort of a really fun workflow, working with the 2D elements incorporated with the 3D elements. For me, it was really easy. The same might not be said for Alan. So here's what he had to say about that. It honestly wasn't that bad because Steve would just go and do everything in Blender and then give us the render and then we'd animate and fix things on top of that. And then we work back and forth. I mean, obviously switching from 2D to 3D has a lot of growing pain, but it wasn't too bad. The cars that you see throughout the sequence were really fun to model. Alan's talented background team drew up some different car textures with images of the front, top, and side of the vehicle. So I could go about and use a very similar workflow actually to a tutorial I did a few years back on how to model simple cars in Blender. Just modeling these cars off of the texture and then using a simple shader setup in Eevee, which is the shader to RGB node connected with a color ramp in a multiply node over just our basic texture in Blender. You can control the shadow fall off this way in a very sort of 2.5D look that has helped sort of match the style that Alan has used in his short films. But now I needed a method of easily distributing these cars throughout the city. And for that, I turned to geometry nodes. By just resampling a curve to points in geometry nodes and then instancing the collection onto those points with this very simple straightforward node setup, I was able to distribute cars along any curve that I would draw in Blender. So this obviously made drawing busy traffic for some of the more distant city shots looking down at the streets really super easy and actually really fun to play around with. With just a few swipes of the mouse, I could achieve some busy rush hour traffic traffic in our city. I went ahead and used this method throughout the city for different debris aspects as well as the assets on top of the rooftops, distributing random things like AC units, 
water towers and whatnot to kind of just fill out some detail throughout the sequence. Then speaking about detail, there was a few moments where our characters interacted with the world. And that was done with a combination of 2D and 3D physics and animation. So some of the Alan's team would draw up some of these glitch animations that were caused by the glitch bombs that these characters were throwing in the sequence. So what I do is I'd render on a flat plane some of the objects that would be involved in these simulations. Then the 2D artist would take these graphics and animate the glitch distortion effects to them. Then once those 2D effects were done, I'd bring them back into Blender with 3D and animate to the world from the camera's perspective, along with a particle system shooting off some debris to give ourselves some destruction with these glitch bombs going on throughout the sequence. And this was used for other aspects of the scene, like the debris or the fire hydrant. Another damaging sequence that was really fun to put together was when our main character shoots a laser through these buildings. I wanted this to have some interaction with the buildings, and for this I used a basic texture of a scorched sort of burn mark. I duplicated the faces of the building that would be interacting with this laser, giving them a transparent material with just this burn on it. I was able to use some color ramps and math nodes to basically just control the strength of this connected to the emission input on our principled shader. So by animating these values, I was able to have these scorched and burn marks burn really hot for a second and then fade out as the dust sort of settles and the character flies away from the sequence. Other aspects that were fun to sort of fill out the details in the city were some of the trees that I added. For this, I used some geometry nodes to distribute a bunch of little circles for the tree. And then I used the shader that Lighting Boy Studio on YouTube actually taught for creating sort of an anime style shader. I won't go into detail on how this is done, but it's pretty clever as it uses some normals from a different object to kind of give it that anime style rendering. Then it was a matter of filling out the scene with more detail spread out throughout. Things like trash cans, a lamppost, and a traffic light. Lights. At this point, I thought the scene was looking really cool, but that doesn't really matter. What does Alan think of the scene? Oh, so that's not Alan. Steve, not Steve. Steve! 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 Oh, what? Oops. It looks beautiful. I mean, the city is vibrant, realistic yet cartoony, which is what I was going for, and it kept the hand-painted look that we've used in previous episodes, so really great work. <laughs> came up with something that I'm really proud of. I don't usually collaborate with other creators on videos, and it was really fun to work with Alan and his incredible team. Alan has an amazing vision for what he wants, and is really fun to work with, and also gets the best results out of people. Does Steve suck at animation? Um, yes. Steve is probably one of the worst animators on the platform, I believe. Yeah, it's just a fact. And actually, I think he's probably the worst, the actual worst. Yeah. Why that son of a bitch?